we are going to go through a spiritual journey through the exciting and profound Hebrew alphabet, the basic language of the Almighty. We will examine each letter carefully to identify its simplicity and its complexity at the same time. Yeshua said in Revelation chapter 1 verse 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. In Hebrew, which is the language that I believe was spoken in this instance, not Greek, it was not Alpha and Omega. But even if you disagree with me, the fact remains that the Hebrew words for Alpha and Omega is Aleph Tav, the first and the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the beginning and the ending, and everything in between, all points to the one and only God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So let us begin. The Aleph is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the leader. It represents our one sovereign God in so many ways. All the letters in the Hebrew alphabet are represented by a picture known as a pictograph and a numerical value. The Aleph has a numerical value of one. In ancient times, the Aleph was represented by the ox because it was considered powerful, a powerful leader. This is where we are going to begin our journey, following the powerful leader all the way to the letter Tav. The letter Aleph is silent. It is only pronounced when there is a vowel associated with it. The vowel therefore introduces another dynamic. Since the letter Aleph is silent, it is sometimes more powerful to remain silent than to speak. Proverbs 17 verse 28 says this, Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise, and he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. So the Aleph is teaching us the power of self-control. God requires us to exhibit self-control, not to speak unless it is relevant and necessary. Proverbs 18.21 Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Galatians 5 verse 22 through 23 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. The Phoenician alphabet is very similar to, the, to Hebrew. As you can see, the Phoenician Aleph is also like an ox head. And if you turn it around, it looks like our modern day A. In Isaiah 53, it says this about the Messiah. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. So one of the characteristics of the suffering servant, the Messiah, is that he would possess unusual self-control. Even when he could speak, he wouldn't, not even to save himself. You remember when they brought him before Pilate, he was asked, are you the king of the Jews? And Yeshua replied, you say. He would not defend himself against all the accusations that, that were made against him. 
Now, when we look at the Hebrew alphabet, you will notice that all the letters are facing away from the Aleph. Reading from right to left, they are demonstrating honor to this letter, not being able to see its face. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai, where he was in the presence of God's glory, he had to cover his face with a veil because his face shone with the glory of God and the people could not look upon it. Exodus 33.20 says, And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. The letter Aleph consists of a combination of two Hebrew letters, the letter Vav and the letter Yod. There are two Yods and a Vav. The letter Vav in this instance is slanted to the left and has a numerical value of six. And that is because it is the sixth letter in the Hebrew alphabet. The yod above has a numerical value of 10. And the yod below also has a numerical value of 10. Together, their values equal 26. Now, the number 26 is a very special number in Hebrew. It belongs to another very important word. yod heh vav -he. This is the unpronounceable name of God. The Hebrew language is written from right to left. The first and the smallest letter in this tetragrammaton is the letter Yod. It is the tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet and therefore has a numerical value of 10. The next letter to the left of Yod is He. And it has a numerical value of five. The next letter to the left is Vav, and it has a numerical value of six. And finally, the last letter is again the He. That equals 26. yod He vav -He is the name that God told Moses to use when speaking to the children of Israel. Interestingly, if you take the Hebrew names of the three patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you count the number of letters making up their names, Abraham equals five, Isaac equals four, and Jacob equals four. You get 13 letters. Then if you take all the Hebrew names of the four matriarchs, Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel, and you count the amount of letters in their names, it also equates to 13. Sarah is spelled with three letters, Shin, Resh, and He. Rebecca is pronounced Rivka and is spelt with four letters. Resh, Bet, Kof, and He. Leah is spelt with three letters. Lamed, Aleph, and He. Rachel is spelt with three letters. Resh, Chet, and Lamed. That makes 13. Altogether, between the 13 patriarchs and the 13 matriarchs, we get 26. So the patriarchs and the matriarchs together make up God's chosen people and the Hebrew nation, and they were to proclaim the name of God, yod -Hey vav -Hey, to the world. John chapter 4, 
verse 22 and 23 says this you worship you know not what we know what we worship for salvation is of the jews but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such to worship him since the aleph can be broken down into three component letters like i showed you before we have the vav the yod and the yod then it's easy to see that the letter aleph which also represents god is actually three in one a three in one god Now, the Hebrew word for one is Echad and is spelt as follows. Aleph, Chet, and Dalet, and is pronounced Echad, meaning one. The word Echad, or one, is found in the most quoted verse in the Torah, and that is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. In the Hebrew, it is written like this, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. In many places, the word Echad means a compound unity. For example, when husband and wife are married, they become Echad, they become one. Another interesting observation that we find in the Shema is this. The letter Aleph appears three times in this most revered Hebrew scripture that they recite every morning and every evening. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad In John 14 verse 6, Yeshua said this, I am the way the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The Hebrew words for way, life and truth are as follows. Way is derech, life is chaim, and truth is emet. Emet, chet and derech. If you take the first word emet, truth, it begins with the letter Aleph. Chaim, life, begins with the letter Chet. And Derech, way, begins with the letter Dalet. Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. In other words, I am Echad. You'll notice that, that uh, Aleph and, and Chet and Dalet spells Echad, which is one. The children of Israel that came out of Egypt were well aware of other gods that the Egyptians worshipped. However, that generation that knew about these other gods and still failed to acknowledge the difference between these so-called Egyptian gods and the one and only sovereign God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, all perished in the wilderness. Only Joshua and Caleb survived that generation. The new generation never knew those Egyptian deities. However, the land into which this new generation was going to enter also had a plethora of gods. 
And because they never knew the gods that their parents knew and only knew of the one God, Moses wanted them to know that they were going to encounter people that served other gods and that they were not to do the same, but to worship only the one God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Hear, O Israel, listen up. I want you to pay attention. The Lord your God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. It was to them that this commandment was given before they entered the promised land. This brings us to the uniqueness of the number one. The number one is the only number that is not plural. There are no multiple elements in it that can be counted or measured. The number one does not consist of anything other than itself. The number one stands apart and is in a class of its own. The number one describes the oneness of God. The oneness of God is the oneness of indivisible unity, who is not subject to multiplicity or divisibility. There is nothing else that is truly one. This unity means that in truth, nothing really exists outside of him. Indivisibility cannot be a property of anything that possesses a body, shape or form. Any physical entity can be subdivided into different parts, all the way down to, the, uh, to its atomic substructure. This does not apply to God, who does not have a body, he does not have a shape and he has no form, and whose oneness is unchanging and constant. The number one is also the first of all the numbers and is therefore synonymous with the beginning or point of origin. By definition, only one thing can be first in any process. In this respect, the first entity that comes into existence is uniquely placed to be considered the most elevated. God has never not existed. Therefore, he is the first cause. As the first cause, he is holy, because by his very nature, he, he is elevated above all. Kadosh. Now, another unique property of the letter Aleph is discovered, discovered when we spell the letter Aleph and compute the combined value of the letters. The Aleph is spelled Aleph, Lamed, Pei Sofit. As we know, the numerical value of the letter Aleph is one. Lamed is 30, and Pei Sofit is 80. The total value is 111. When you consider that the single letter Aleph is one, and the spelled out word Aleph is triple one. Then you have three ones in one, or three in one symbolizing the triune nature of God. Literally, the entire Aleph Bet is actually talking to us about the three in one triune God. Here you can see a diagram of the Hebrew alphabet with all 22 standard letters plus the five final letters known as Sofit. These five letters change form when they become the final letter in a word. For example, the final letter in the Hebrew word Aleph is Pei Sofit. It is derived from the letter Pei, which is the 17th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. As you can see, the letter Pei is pronounced as a P and symbolizes a mouth. Its numerical value is 80. You might be wondering why the word Aleph is spelled Aleph and not Alep with a P. 
That is because there is a dagesh involved, which changes its sound to an F, and it becomes a fe sufit. I won't go into any more detail at this stage. Suffice to say that a dagesh is a small dot placed either inside, below, above, or to the right of a letter to indicate its pronunciation. You will notice that there are three rows, ones, tens, and hundreds. The first row at the top has single digits from one to nine. The second row has double digits from 10 to 90. And the third row has triple digits from 100 to 900. The numerical value of the first column is 111, triple one. The number 111 can be written in Hebrew as follows. 100, 10, and 1. If you take the numerical value of these four words, including the word and, it comes to 635. The number 3 in Hebrew is written as shalosha. The numerical value of shalosha is 635. So again, we have 111, triple one, and three, coming back to one. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you believe not, because you are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. And just before his crucifixion, Jesus was scourged by the Romans. John chapter 19, verse 1. The Bible does not directly indicate how many lashes Jesus received. Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 3 states that a criminal should not receive more than 40 lashes. In order to avoid possibly accidentally breaking this command, the Jews would only give a criminal 39 lashes. The Apostle Paul mentioned this practice in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Again, though, Jesus was scourged by the Romans, not by the Jews. Therefore, uh, there is no reason to believe that the Romans would follow a Jewish tradition. Scourging was the punishment ordered for Jesus by Pontius Pilate. He was to be flogged, Matthew 27, 26, but not killed in that way. His death was to be carried out by crucifixion after the scourging. Interestingly, if you, if you calculate the, the uh, numerical values of the two words, yod he vav echad, Adonai Echad, it equals 39. Just saying. If we take the word Aleph, spelled Aleph, Lamed, 
and pace of feet. And we rearrange the letters backwards. Pei first, and then Lamed, and finally Aleph. We get the word Pili, which means wonderful. Now here are two verses that will bring this home. And the angel of the Lord said to him, why do you ask my name? seeing it is wonderful and even more wonderful pun intended is this one isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Finally, we know that man was created in the image of God. We can easily confirm this by calculating the numerical value of the name Adam and comparing it to the name of God, yod heh vav -Hey. If we take the name Adam and spell it out in Hebrew, it is written like this. Aleph, Dalit, and Mem Sofit. The combined value is 45. Now, if we spell each letter of God's unpronounceable name, the Tetragrammaton, we get Yod, Vav, Dalit. That spells Yod. And it equates to 20. Then we get He Aleph. That spells the letter He. And it equates to 6. Then we get the letter Vav, which is spelt Vav, Aleph, Vav and it equates to 13. And then we get hey again, giving us another six. And altogether, it comes to 45. So man was created in the image of God.